Welcome back everybody. Today we will be going over the if function in Excel, which I would argue is one of the most important functions in Excel, and you will see why throughout the video. If you are here just looking for a specific type of if and an example of it, there are timestamps in the description below. However, if you're here to learn if and all the ways you can use it, keep watching and we will jump into it now. Now, for those of you who don't know what the if function is, the if function is a logic statement that determines a condition to be true or false and will provide a different answer depending on it. For example, the condition can be a simple statement such as, if I get home before 9 tonight, I will watch a movie. In this case, if this statement turns out to be true and you do get home before 9 tonight, you will watch a movie. However, if you get home later than 9, you will not watch a movie. Now. Let's get into our first simple example here. This table represents employees and the targets they met last year, with a maximum of 200 total targets. If we were wanting to give a poor rating next to every employee who didn't meet at least 120 targets, we can use the if function to fill it in for us instead of going through each employee's score one by one. Now, the first thing you would want to do is type in the if function. So I'm going to go ahead and enter equals if, open up that bracket, and I will first type in the logical test. Now, in this case, I want to test if this cell number is bigger or smaller than 120. So I will click on it and then go smaller than 120. And that will be my logical test. And if it is true, I will add a condition by inserting a comma and then after the first comma, the condition if it is true, I want to type in poor. So put in your quotations, poor, and then end it off with quotations, and then comma again. And the second comma will then indicate the value that it will put in if it is false. If it is false, I would like it to stay blank. So I'm just going to put double quotation marks here and then close it off with an end bracket. Perfect. It auto-filled the whole column for me and everything under 120, as you can see, is labeled as poor. And that's how the if function works. We can also do the same thing for great performance right here. We can type in equals if, open bracket, tell C3 is greater than 170 return rate and if not return blank then it would autofill everything above 170 with great now we will do the same thing for satisfactory performance too except this time we will be using a logical operator the two main operators we will be using are and and or and these are the main operators you will most likely also be using in your formulas. Now, if you don't know what these are, I have a video explaining them, and I'll put the link in the description below. But for now, I'm going to assume you know what the AND and OR functions do. However, I'll still walk you through them a little bit when we get to them. So, we want to get a range between 120 and 170. And this is where the AND operator comes in handy. You want to type in equals if open that bracket and then you will put and right after here and what and does is it basically allows you to have more than one logical test so with just if you have your condition and then true or false now you can do true conditions and the thing about and is that both conditions have to be true in order for true to occur so our first logical condition is that this cell is greater than 119. If it's greater than 119, then 120 up will be viable. We also want to put the cell to be smaller than 171. So all the way up to 170 will be counted. After we put both the conditions we want for the end, we will close off that bracket, type in a comma, and then we will put in our value if true. So our value, if true, we want sat is factory in. And then our value, if false, we once again want to leave that blank. 
and close off that bracket. And then it works perfectly. Everything between 120 and 170 will fill in as satisfactory. Once again, look at the formula up here. The AND allows multiple conditions which are separated by a comma compared to just the normal if that allows one condition. Now for the OR operator, we will look at the poor slash great column. This will point out which employees are just not satisfactory. So they could be poor or they could be great. Similar to the if and, we want to type in if. Instead of and, we are going to go with or. Now what the or function allows us to do is put in multiple conditions. However, they don't both have to be satisfied in order for the true value of the if statement to be executed. What I mean by this is that for here, if we wanted poor and great, we can write this cell has to be smaller than 120 as our first condition in our second cell has to be greater than 170. What this will outline is every rating above 170 and every rating below 120, which will give us our poor and great values winning out the satisfactory. You see that how this wouldn't work if it was an AND function? Because a number can't be lower than 120 and bigger than 170 at the same time. After this, you will put your comma and then your value in if it is true. So I'm just going to put true, for example, in this column, and then our answer in if it is false. I'm just going to leave it blank again. Close that off with the bracket. The whole row, if anything is poor or great, it will now be defined as true. So true, great, true, poor, it works for every single one. Say we wanted everyone's rating in a single column instead of having them spread across three. We can use ifs for this. So you'll want to start by typing in equals ifs, open up that bracket, and what this will allow you to do is type in as many logical tests as you want, along with the value if it is true. So for example, our first logical test will be for poor. We will test whether cell 3 is smaller than 120. Add a comma, and if it is smaller than 120, we want it to type in poor for us. Now, after that second comma, you don't put in what you think or what you want it to be if it turns out false. You just go straight to your second logical test. Our second logical test, once again, involves the same cell, but this time it is for great. If it is larger than 170, we want it to be labeled as great. Close off those quotations and then add your comma. You will now put in the third logical test. Our third logical test will once again involve an AND operator. And in this AND operator, it's the exact same thing as satisfactory was earlier. We will pick the cell, say it has to be larger than 119. For our first argument, and then our second argument will be the cell again, needing to be smaller than 171. We will close off that back bracket, and that will be our two arguments for the AND function. Add a comma. And then the value, if true, we will put in satisfactory. Close that off. And then just add a closing bracket at the end to finish it off. You do not need any condition if false. And as you can see here, this looks a lot nicer and cleaner than it being spread across three sections. And we can also sort this to be from A to Z to make it look a lot nicer. However, we are just going to go straight on to the next if. Our next step here is to look at some function combinations with if, such as sum if and count if. Now using our data from the rating column, we will calculate the average for each grouping using one formula. We will start off by typing equals sum if, and what the sum if function will do is sum a 
column or row of values as long as those values meet the necessary conditions put out by the if. So the first thing you want to type in is the range for your condition. I will use the rating column for this, which will be from H3 to H52. That is my range. I'm also going to put dollar signs around these so that they don't move no matter what when my formula drags down. And I put those dollar signs around so quickly just by type, typing in, or not typing in, sorry, touching the F4 function key. Now, for this range here, I need to specify a criteria. My criteria is going to be poor. So if it says poor in here, I then specify my sum range, which will match it up to the targets met. So basically what you're seeing here is wait, allow me to first highlight my targets met. And I'm also going to surround this one with dollar signs and close that off of the bracket. So now what you're seeing here is above the first comma, the column in which we are applying the condition to from the second column. In. So in this column, if it is poor, oh, there's poor. Now we are going to go look in the second range and take that number. Looking, oh, here's satisfactory. We are not going to take the number for that range and see how the rows match up. So then it should give me equals 154. It just, it just happens to autofill automatically. I don't really need it to autofill. So in order to get rid of that, we will just undo undo calculated column. Now, 100, or I'm sorry, 1,544. That's not exactly the average, though. That's just the sum of everything. So how am I going to find out how many pores I specifically have without filtering or going through and counting and finding out? Well, I'm going to divide by the number of pores there are, but I will use the count if function for this. So you're going to type in count if, open the bracket, and then specify the range in which you will use. So I'm going to go back to my rating column, and it is H3 to H52. Once again, going to surround that with dollar signs, and then my criteria for the count if will just be poor. So every time it sees poor in the rating column, counts as one. So we'll count it up all for me without having to go through and count ourselves. The average will end up being 102.93. Once again, I only need to see this once. And then I should be able to drag it over to get the average of satisfactory and great as well. If I just change poor to satisfactory over here, or sum if and count if in both. There we go. And then the average for great, I will change poor here to great. And there we have it, the average of great, the average of satisfactory, and the average of poor using the sum if and count if functions together. For our last example, we will go over nested ifs. A nested if is when your first if condition leads to another if condition and so on for how many times you please. We will demonstrate that by finding out for each individual employee whether they are above or below the average of their respective rating. So we want to start out with saying equals if C3 which is the first cell of our targets met category over there is smaller than 120. This is the same condition we did to find out if something was poor. Now, last time our value if true, the comma after the logical test, we put in as poor. However, we are checking to see if it is above or below the poor average this time. So we will use a nested if. I will then type in if again, and it's okay if it's just inside another if, 
and then you go on to your next logical statement, which for me would be C3 is bigger than, what's our average? 103. Let's just round up. If it's bigger than 103, comma, the value if that is true. Well, if it's bigger than 103, then we wanted to type in above or above average. And then if it's false, we wanted to type in below for below average. We will close off that bracket and then add in a value if the original if, the very first if there, is false by adding in another comma and just making it blank for now. Enter and then above, above, below, you know, for every poor. However, this only satisfies the poor average. We can also add the satisfactory and great average in this formula as well. It's just going to take a lot of nested ifs. So get ready for this. Instead of having the false function for the very first if return blank, we will just continue on with another if. And this if will be for the satisfactory. So our original condition for satisfactory, finding out whether it was one or not, is our and operator. Seeing if C3 was bigger than 120 or C3 was smaller than 171. Close that off to finish our AND operator. And then instead of having our value, if true, be just satisfactory, we are going to go into another if statement, open up that bracket, and logically test it if it is bigger or smaller than the average of satisfactory. So we will type in C3. And if that is bigger than the average, let's just round it to 145. We want it to type in above. And then if it is false, we want it to type in below for us. And we can close that off with a bracket here. And then have our next false value. Now, instead of closing it all off here, which it would be good for poor and satisfactory, we are now going to add great into it as well. So we will begin with another if statement, open up that bracket, and then the main cell again, C3, check, is it bigger than 170? Now, if it is bigger than 170, I want you to check if it is bigger than the average of 187. Now, if it is bigger than the average of 187, I want you to type in above. Now. If it is not bigger than the average of 187, I want you to type in below. And that's how that all works. So now we will close it off with as many brackets necessary to go to the very if, very first if function. So four or five brackets at the end. You can't really see that. And it should all work out fine. So below, let's go back to our ratings. Not, I can't seem to fit them on the same page, but there we go. Okay, below is 127 for satisfactory, below 145. Yes, let's go to a random one. Above is for great, that is, is 199 above. Yes, it is. In fact, that's probably the best score on here. So now you can see how the nested if functions really get complicated really fast, however, extremely helpful. Now you should also be aware that there may be better functions to do this, possibly VLOOKUPs or INDEX or XLOOKUP. However, this is just a really complex example of how to do the IFS function along with nested IFS. Now, with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it helpful, please check out my other videos and subscribe. And if there's anything you'd like to see in the future, please comment down below.